Welcome to my Bewitching Podcast, where I take you on a journey to initiate you into the mysteries and pleasures of all things magical and more. I'm Julie Nelson, Rich Witch, botanical perfumer, astrologer, and creator of the Fragrant Oracle. I'll discuss a myriad of topics passionately on women rising unapologetically, witchcraft, including spells, rituals, insightful astrology updates, and oracle card readings. I'll also introduce you to special guests who share their bountiful knowledge and experience in the art of witchcraft, the intuitive and healing arts, and being wildly unapologetic. If you are seeking a commanding, fiery scent that enlivens your spirit, one that is versatile, powerful, motivated, and swift with her action, allow me to introduce you to Ginger for her magic is a must-have to restore and supercharge your magical workings. I will support you in your life's adventures with confidence and courage to manifest abundance and good fortune. If you, my lovely, are feeling stuck, lack motivation and need a pep in your step, connect with my impassioned essence to speed things up and make shift happen quickly ask and you shall receive for i evoke excitement and passion in all areas of your life dear heart here i share some powerful and bold affirmations for you to use in synergy with my warming scent. I dare to be bold and unwavering. I am inspired every day. I am a powerful, wild woman. Abundance and prosperity comes to me effortlessly. I am a fiery, romantic. And here I am today again with the beautiful Emma Mick. Let's step into my beautiful friend Emma, an amazing psychosexologist. And just give yourself another introduction because people may not have heard our first podcast, um, which is podcast six. And um, yeah, it's a great podcast. And we did two parts because we couldn't stop talking. (laughs) (laughs) No one like us, Julie, to not stop talking. (laughs) Um, Thank you. Thank you. So I I am, as Julie says, I'm a psychosexologist. What the psycho bit means is rather than I'm batshit crazy, as I said at the start, is that I have a psychology degree. So I'm trauma-informed and can bring in a whole wealth of knowledge to the, the field of human sexuality. In a nutshell, I help people have better sex. (laughs) <laughs> by you know themselves can I add that including with themselves that's right and um I'm also a tantra and a yoga teacher so it's not for me this work is not just about like I made that sound really glib and really light-hearted and it is and it's fun but there's also this really deep sensuality to it and for me it's whole system whole of a human being a spiritual emotional psychological the physical and we and social and we need to really look at how all of that ties together to create the experience that we're having and how does our sexuality flow from that place Mm. can I just say that 
you know, because we know each other and I see your posts, I've never, and you know, in the past I've read blogs and, you know, listened to sexologists, et cetera, and, you know, I've studied a bit of Tantra, but I've never experienced somebody speaking about it and sharing about it the way that you do and I just love it like it's so easeful and you know you're getting out there and I think this is so powerful for women and men actually Um, I just relate to women all the time because they're my clients so I want to say thank you because I think it's very powerful and I see the responses of people when they read your posts and see your offers and it's really opening up, you know, a a state of being with women and the communication that perhaps they're not so um, bold enough, may I say, to speak about loudly and clearly, which I believe we need to, and I love that you do, and you do it in such a beautiful, elegant way. Thank you. I receive that. Yeah. That's a really powerful feedback, and I'm I'm really grateful for you sharing your perspective of what your experience is, but also what you witness in our online community and how Mm. they respond to what I'm sharing. That's really meaningful. Appreciate that. I appreciate you. Thank you. Oh, I appreciate you too. Get all gooey, I think your listeners came just for a love fest. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. right. Um. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I do. I think you know if we if I try and frame that for the listeners, what what is really important to me is that. We make these things feel really doable. It's got to be accessible. And so for me, I'm always thinking about, you know, where is where is the person in front of me? Where is their nervous system? Because we might want this thing here, but if the nervous system is in a stress response, we kind of can't move that far. And so that's a really big thing, I think, to tie into the MAGA phase because having come out of mother where we're parenting and so much of our energy and effort is going into you know raising functional human beings and how our own stuff comes up in that process and how we've got to navigate all of that we can often be in some kind of survival mode through our parenting years and then getting into the maga phase we can be faced with not only the differences in our bodies that we've already touched about, but a different kind of relationship with our partner. If we've got one, we've got perhaps most likely adult children, perhaps no children at home, and we have this opening up of time because the investment in parenting has become different, but we're at a different phase of life that maybe we don't know how to use that very well or how to tap into that and so then we move into this rediscovering who am I who am I now that you know the the really intensive work of raising humans has it's not ended I haven't got the right word (laughs) <laughs> has transitioned. No, it hasn't ended. I think for me, it's um, it's it can be we relax a bit more, but actually, it's really difficult to let go of that. It's a yep. massive transition, massive transition. Um, I know some women that have found it easy, and others that have not. Yeah. Yeah, and that's it's a really big thing to consider too because when we, if we sort of bring libido into this conversation, all of these things are absolutely relevant to libido and how you act on your sexuality. If your attention is constantly going to your children and that's super intense and, you know, it kind of takes up all or most of your energy, then there isn't anything 
or much left over for sensuality and sexuality. Mm. Can I share too, speaking about libido, it's not uncommon for many of us to lose our libido for a variety of reasons. I did. I lost it with my ex-partner and that started happening um, through the abuse and how I was being treated. Um, and also menopause, um, I did lose my libido and I know that a lot of women fear this mm. but I'm telling you ladies it comes back <laughs> <laughs> it's just laying dormant for a wee while <laughs> and it may not disappear for some but most women I know my age and I know through myself it's like whoa because I was so excited to go through menopause, um, which we'll talk about as well. But And a lot of women think their life is over and, oh, my God, they're losing something. And I have to say this, like I couldn't wait because my bleed was fucking horrendous and mm -hmm. there just wasn't the recognition for women and there still really isn't of the pain and the discomfort and mine was absolutely horrid the only good thing that came out of it was my beautiful woman daughter and for that I'm grateful so we're not losing anything we're simply stepping into a new phase and let me tell you I've heard so many women say oh my god I'm turning 60 my life is over and it's like Mine is just fucking beginning in a new way. It is a new lease on life and it is exciting and powerful. Sorry for interrupting you, Emma. I just had to say. <laughs> I don't think this is the podcast to tame anything. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> we shall manage interruptions, I'm sure. I, I, I just love how powerfully you put that, Julie. And there is, you know, there there really is some changes that we go through sexually that means many women are and many women are experiencing changes that means they might have a dip in their libido. And for some women, they actually have a bit of an increase in libido around the time of menopause. And it's really just dependent on the individual person and what they're experiencing. And when you, you know, when you touched on having experiences earlier in life where your libido paused you know, when we're in times of stress and the nervous system is going into shutdown or our libido is responsive and one of our things in responsive libido is often connection and also witnessing our partner kind of being their best self you know seeing them parenting really beautifully or get mm. some shit done around the house or I, oh, I like my husband's being handy. I mean, yep, that that um <laughs> that does something to me. I so, get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah. And so if we're experiencing something that means those things are present, then our libido doesn't flow as isn't present. Did I say isn't or is is not present? Then our libido might not flow a little bit. And I feel like that might be jumping around. So if I just pause there to explain that we can have libido that's spontaneous. And that is what we see in movies. You know, someone whose libido is like a pilot light, just waiting for that little bit of extra fuel to come through and off we go. And then some of us have libido that is responsive, which means certain things need to be aligned and there's a little bit of build up time that needs to happen. And so responsive libido style is more likely to have dips in their libido than a spontaneous, but it is also true for people with spontaneous libido that there can be ups and downs. Okay, so I was going to say, because I feel I, I, I have experienced both. Mm. Yep. Yep. And I know that when I have lost it in a relationship, it is situational. Yes. Not actually me losing that sexuality, that part of me, it's because I'm disappointed. I have yes. no desire. I've lost the desire. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And then we can have responsive desire but have so much internal and external environment that is aligned in the way we need it to that our desire can appear spontaneous because we've got things lined up in a row. So that's the the basis for me of why I talk about pleasure so much because it makes life feel good, but also it's, you know, it's the juice. It's the juice for life. It's the juice for feeling good. It's the juice for feeling confident and comfortable to have a sensuality and sexuality that we're engaged with. Yeah, pleasure. And it's such a beautiful word. I just I love the word pleasure and I believe that it is and we can ha- take pleasure in so many things that raises our vibration and we can bring these things into our our intimate play with food and smell and you know I was just thinking then um, stepping back to the mega stage for a minute, you know, some essential oils, I have to bring them in. So you've got Rose, which is the queen archetype, and she's about receiving and she's love and beauty. She's ruled by Venus. Then you've got Jasmine, who is the mermaid, the seductress, and there's something like 13 different archetypal energies of the seductress. There is your Langalang, who is just sex on legs, you know. Um, Ood, carnation, cacao, which is about freedom. So bringing in these scents is, I love bringing perfume into my my sensual activities, my sexual activities, and even for the libido, you know, essential oil because they have that direct link to the brain. Yep. I may have gone off track there, but I just wanted to throw that down or in, I should say. I think what you're sharing is really powerful because we know that we do have links between smell and powerful parts of the brain. And so one of the things that you can do from a libido perspective is using smell. And I've I've been present watching Julie witnessing her what an absolute privilege creating her perfumes for clients and it really is absolute alchemy (laughs) that Mm. process mind-blowing and we can then pair that with sexual activity with sensuality sexuality and then when we bring that scent in the body will have an association with that scent and that state of being and especially if your libido is a little bit slow you can and and slow doesn't mean bad let's be clear about that let's say slow means just needs time to warm up yeah likes to take its luscious time and so if if scent is part of that picture your body then gets this really distinct trigger that oh I know what this smell means and the body will start responding and if when your mind smells that your mind also has that association and that can help with that lead up time to ease in absolutely and so pleasurable I mean with a with a um a warming up of the libido, we're really allowing ourselves to experience a longer length of pleasure in my, that's how I see it, especially with scent, because, you know, I I mean, I think perfumes are very orgasmic, you know, call them perfume-gasms. Yes, (laughs) yes. (laughs) I love that scent is super powerful. And and I think sometimes we don't tap into that as much as we could. Yeah, very powerful. Mm. Yeah. So we've touched on the libido a little bit. We've touched on the mega. We've touched on um, a little bit. Have we really done enough on the mother as well? Because I feel that is such a, um, a powerful area of our life because we're so focused on survival for our children we put everything else to the background 
And, you know, those, those common words of I'm too tired, I'm too this, I'm too that, I've got too much else to think about. How can we... How can we bring back some sensual sexual pleasure that doesn't necessarily feel like it's a chore? Because I, I know that I I used to think that myself, you know, bringing up my daughter. But it was hard because half the time we were in hospital. So um, yeah, do you have anything to share on that? Because actually, as I'm thinking about it, it's very important and. It can often be the breakdown of many relationships. Yeah. Yeah, our sexual connection with our partner is a really huge part of the health of our relationship. Mm -hmm. And so thinking about trying to kind of tie together some of what we've already talked about too, connection is connection is best to fuel sex from a relationship point of view. So, you know, just little things like turning towards each other, making time for each other, you know, not just having a kiss, a little quick peck on the cheek or peck on the lips to say hi and bye, like actually making the touchstones that you've got with your partner really meaningful, even just carving up five minutes a day, sitting together not both on your phones, like make physical contact and talk or physical contact and read a book and have the screens away. And from an from a personal perspective, carving out time for things that make us feel good. And so that helps us with that sense of depletion and that sense of there's nothing in our life that is for us. So you might ask yourself the question, we may have talked about this last podcast, I can't remember exactly, um, What if I could have any one thing, what would that be? Mm. And usually the answer will be something that is quite small and doable. So it might be a cup of tea. It might, it might even be a glass of water. You might need something to eat or step outside and feel the sun on your skin or the bare earth beneath your feet. Right, so usually something really simple that guides us to a restoring activity that is slow, that's giving the body a pause. And we really need these pauses in our life. We really need these moments that help us feel full rather than just racing and moving between things constantly. And then from there, you... you may naturally build momentum towards thinking about that. If there's no energy towards sex, if there's no spare energy, then, you know, trying to just go straight there is pushing. We actually look at lifestyle first. Yeah, which leads me to something that I experienced myself and other women have said this to me, and this is... um, really relevant to what you were saying because sometimes you know you might be that tired or you haven't slept and you don't have the energy and you fear that a cuddle if you give your partner a cuddle they're immediately going to expect to have intercourse and it's not even that you don't necessarily want it you might think I don't want this it's just simply you haven't got the energy for it but this is something so keeping the distance keeps you safe (laughs) or safe the right word it may not be it might be it's just perhaps you're thinking you're um trying to savor some energy where in fact when you do um Dance a little first and have pleasure, you know, seek the pleasure and do very simple things as you were saying. When you've had to, when you've had that intimate, full-on intimate moment of intercourse, it's like, fuck, why don't I do this more often? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we really cut off our nose at times, don't we? And it's it's 
we need women like you to educate because this is something that in the past we've never been educated on and um and to feel honored and respected for whatever um we choose to do i think is a big thing so it's you don't want to feel like, oh, um, I really want to have a cuddle, but I'm not going to because he may or she may want to have sex and that's not what I'm, I just want that intimate moment. So, however, when you're not thinking like that and you have the time and it naturally leads to that, it's beautiful and powerful. Really well, beautiful. Think- I'm just... Yeah, you are. I, I think what you're bringing up is actually really important. And I've worked with lots of people who are to have talking about this experience where, you know, I don't want to go and give my partner a kiss or a hug because to them that signals sex, whereas I want yeah. it to just be that. So there's two things going on here. Most likely the person who is experiencing that as a signal for sex or as initiation possibly has responsive, not responsive, but spontaneous desire style. So this is enough information for their body that their body goes, all right, it's on, Yes. <laughs> right? So, you know, they don't need much and they're awake. The other thing is that if we don't have much of that or any just kisses, cuddles, just going and having a pash with our partner without that kiss becoming sex, then our bodies have actually learned that this thing does signal that. So Mm -hmm. I really recommend having touchstones throughout your day where you make physical contact and it doesn't mean sex. It's not about leading towards sex. You kiss for the sake of it. And there's actually research that says Couples who have a really great sex life do certain things that other couples who don't have a really great sex life don't do. And on that list includes cuddling, kissing for no reason, making time for each other, turning towards each other. So if if I'm looking out the window and I go, hey, honey, look at this. And my husband goes, no, I'm busy. Every time I say, hey, honey, look at this. I'm learning that he's not interested. But if Mm. he says, okay, I'm coming, and then comes over and says, what is it? He's making time and effort and putting effort and energy into responding towards me. And we call this turning towards, and it creates connection and helps to secure respect within the relationship. And so when we have these things, like just a pash for no reason, we're having a moment together, there's connection, we are pausing, just stepping out of everything else that's away from us. There's a little bit of sexual fire that's built, so it might build a little bit of tension. It's also, it's just keeping the relationship alive. And when we do that without it then having to lead to sex, we actually have more things in our couple's toolkit. And that's what we want. And I and I I love that. And I've just got to say, like, kissing is my favorite. Oh my god, I love kissing. It it is so passionate. Anyway, yeah. Just away another, away another secret of mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, just, I love kissing. I can kiss and kiss and kiss and kiss. Um, so um, I also want to say that that um it often comes to my mind there's a photo that you share of you and your hubby where you're forehead to forehead yep and even that like you know just oh I mean there's so much power in that and it's so beautiful and that's just um one simple action that you can do and it's almost like you know, you you are, you're physically, but you're energetically falling into each other. You know, that's how I see it. It's like this, you know, yeah. um, beautiful, deep connection and it's touching foreheads, you know. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah. That one's a really simple tantra technique. So instead of just kissing, and some people listening may have heard of the six-second kiss, so that's where your lips are touching for six seconds, 
um, just to bring more presence to it. But the forehead touch, I think, brings you into deeper presence with each other because you can just slow down in a completely different way from that touch, from that connection. So you can, if you're going to try that, my husband and I do this instead of a peck on the on the lips. Uh, it is a really great, simple touchstone. So you just stand in front of each other, bring your foreheads together, and you're standing quite close. The fronts of you may or may not touch. You can, if you wish, bring your right hand onto the center of your partner's chest. They can put their right hand on the center of your chest. If you're doing that, you may like to put your left hand on top of their heart, hand over your heart. So it's your heart, their right hand, your left hand and the same for them, your right hand, then their left hand. And you just be together. Mm. And if you're, you know, if this is really natural for you and you want to take it a step further, you can synchronize the breath. And I also want to, just going back to the other thing that we were talking about before, before we move on too much, I think it's really important with things signaling sex to one partner, sometimes we actually need to say, I would like a cuddle and just a cuddle. Can we just hug? Can we just kiss? Sometimes we do need to say that and just train our partner to, um, or even ourselves, to have these touchstones without it being that. And there are some tantra exercises that do that. There's one in particular where you're naked, you lie down on your sides and you press the fronts of your bodies together and you spend five minutes just lying naked front to front without letting that go to sex then you you know do something else you get up and start your day or share some other rituals sex is not to flow from that particular thing and you might think oh my god that's really weird but what it does is it gives you other ways to be together and other ways to be naked together without this only meaning sex so that you have more connection and I actually wrote communication on my paper here. So I'm glad you brought that up because <laughs> I feel that um, we have, it's it's absolutely essential to communicate. You know, we if we don't speak our truth and communicate our truth in a way of like, I, 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 I simply want to cuddle or I just want to have a kiss, or let's yeah. just lie down naked together. I feel that these things are so powerful. Like I'm I'm almost feeling them in my body now yeah. as we speak. And, um, yeah, we need to communicate. So my next question with the communication then is some women find it really challenging. Um. So what could you recommend for them? Because it's like, you know, they find it hard to communicate. They haven't been taught how to communicate. And this, yeah. this is not just in the Magor or Mother stage. This is at any stage, like setting some boundaries, but good, healthy boundaries. They don't have to be aggressive. Or It's like how can we communicate and be heard? I yeah. know that's a massive topic, but you might have a couple of tips. It is a really big topic and, you know, it, it really is one that affects everybody differently based on their gender, their sexuality, their stage of life mm -hmm. and the different messages that we had about how it was and was not okay to be sexual alongside the gender messages that we've experienced at that time. So, you know, for the mega phase, we're probably looking at a phase where uh, women's pleasure was really on the back burner and particularly in heterosexual relationships where, you know, it's perhaps all about the male partner and really poor sex ed. The sex ed that we're starting to see is getting better, which is exciting, still not always as good as it could be. And so we have these gaps in our ed in our sex education filled in from movies and TV and books and things like that. So what we see in those is usually not assertive females. 
and it's often highly romanticized. We have to keep in mind that when we're watching visual stimuli in standard media, so movies and television, that there are actually rules about sexual safety that are being adhered to. And so we see a small number of positions portrayed. Mm -hmm. We generally see people coming at the same time and we see a particular script that's mm -hmm. highly romanticised and there's lots of sexual tension and then it's on and, you know, two minutes later it's all over. So when we, when we think of, that's so, okay. Sorry. When we think about how this affects our communication, then this is kind of laying the foundation for what we think sex should look like and what it should be. And so we can be thinking it should be like that and it's not, or we could be wanting something different and not knowing how to go about it or, you know, how to ask our partner to, you know, touch us differently or whatever it is. So my favourite phrase is, it would turn me on if. I love that. I love that. And we did touch on the media and sex in the last one. It's like I think kids think it's wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. But anyway, um, what was that? I love it when you turn me on. It would turn me on if. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, it would turn me on if. Oh, yes. Yeah. That, that's very powerful. So, um yeah, I'm writing that down. It would turn me on if. And so you can use this phrase before you've started. You could use this phrase during your play. And sometimes we don't want something quite so complicated, so higher, lower, softer, right there, stay there, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and don't move, don't stop, right? Yeah. Softer mm. phrases like this. I'm sorry, my phone just beeped, which means it'll be my husband because it's on Do Not Disturb. <laughs> it might just come through the audio. Right. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, this is this is you know keep it keep it really simple, just really simple, and it doesn't have to be big communications if we can have those with our partner great and the first time that might be really nerve-wracking so it could be while you're doing something like cooking dinner together or driving where you're not having to look at each other mm -hmm. and I uh, generally if you phrase something like an I would like to try it's really helpful to just reinforce with your partner how important sex is for you and a lot of people say something like well I want more out of sex and I'm not really enjoying it and so I feel like I've been lying to my partner all this time and so how do I know go about fixing that and so just framing it as you know a sexual relationship is a really important part of our relationship to me and I'd love for it to be you know really beautiful for both both of us how does it feel to try can we start talking about this I'd love to go do this um, I've been thinking about getting a toy, yeah, whatever it is, right? And so there's lots of gentle ways that we can start to approach these topics and conversations. And then in the moment, it would turn me on if you would kiss my neck mm. or just could you, could we higher, lower, softer, yeah, I love that. That That's beautiful language and thank you for sharing that because I believe that will help a lot of women. Um, I wanted to just come back around to the mega because, um, as we said, you know, a woman's, and it depends whether she, I think it, it can depend on whether she's single or with a partner, um, but the with the sex being on the back burner um yet a lot of mega women want it they mm. want more of it they want good sex they want better sex um and it's often the partner that may not be you know um for whatever reason so again it's about 
letting them know gently without it being forceful, isn't it? And using um, some of what you shared before. Yeah. We're all yep. different. We're all going to go through our journeys at different times. So it's not, you know, with every um, phase of a woman, you don't have to be like this, that, or the other. We've got all of those phases. We can tap into them. Uh, we are all of them. But these are really, really powerful points that we've talked about today. Do you have anything else that you feel is relevant to this conversation? Yeah, I can respond to something you were just talking about where yeah. you know women are getting into the mega phase and they're, you know, are feeling reinvigorated to explore sex in a new ways and maybe their partner is not there. Yeah. And one of the things that can have happened is through our child rearing years, years, there have can have been a disconnection between partners and their libidos and the focus that's going into, you know, growing babies, feeding babies, and then, you know, where perhaps where the mental load is within the family. And there can be a disconnect mm. between people in the relationship. And generally generally speaking we see that the female bodied parent the mother tends to be the person whose libido will drop in these years mm. because there's so much focus and energy going into the children they're mm. tired you know whatever it is all the things and so when there's not been a way for the two people the, the couple to meet together and to continue to work on their sexual relationship, sometimes we come out of this phase and our partner can have not quite given up but have just kind of gone, okay, well, that's not happening. And, you know, so they're, they're just they've learnt to be without or there also is very much for all sexes, there is very much a use it or lose it. So frequent, mm -hmm. like frequent being kind of weekly mm -hmm. erections for penis owners is really helpful to keep the strength of erections going and the length and the girth of the penis. And for women and for female body owners, vulva owners, a similar kind of thing can happen. So if the vagina is not being used, it can shorten and decrease in width. So even if you're self-pleasuring and your self-pleasure is all external play, the health of your vagina can benefit from you maybe using a dildo, even if that dildo is not, um, you know, used in any kind of thrusting motion, but is simply helping the vagina to keep its length and its girth. So we can see that there can be some physiological changes as well as the connection changes, as well as libido changes. There can be lubrication changes, particularly for vulva owners. There can be erectile changes for penis owners. And so we tend to find that we can come into this phase, we want it, and then things might be working differently or our partner is maybe not as interested. And so you have to find a new way to work with that. Mm -hmm. So what I would recommend there is if there's something physical, we work with that first. Remember that sex is not just something that goes into something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can broaden the definition of sex so that it includes a whole host of things between holding hands and intercourse. And that does that then means that we get away from having to have like feeling guilty about the fact that intercourse hurts, for example, or that maybe there's not a strong enough erection at the moment for intercourse to be possible. And so when we expand the definition of sex, there's a whole lot of play that we can do and then find a way to reconnect as a couple and then from there look at expanding sex, not mm -hmm. just trying to spice up sex first. Look at the strength of your relationship and Love then it. let sex flow from that. Yeah. 
And that, yeah, that's very powerful. And I just want to let everybody know that hasn't experienced this. By the time your kids get to a certain age, they actually let go of us. We have the trouble letting go often. So um, be aware of that so that you do actually, they still may be living in the house, but you're in, going to end up with a lot of time that you can bring all of these beautiful, pleasurable um ways to communicate and build on your sex life and, as Emma says, in a whole um, new way and more expanded. And before we wrap up, I just want to share that um, thank you, Emma. But Emma has an offer that she is going to, so I'm not, far how, sure how far you'll travel whether it's just in your own area or um you'll go to Sydney or because I want to go shopping with you um where she will take clients to explore an experience um going into sex shops is there a better name for them than sex shops toy adult toy shops and I'm thinking <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are afraid to do this and um and I'm thinking oh my god I could imagine I would have so much fun with you because I'm naughty and cheeky but what a powerful <laughs> idea <laughs> it's my school bio um I just think it would be amazing so before we wrap up would you like to share a little bit about that and of course we'll put your contact details in and hope I haven't put you in but I I just saw that you're doing that and I thought I love that and it yeah. would also give people confidence it would that's my hope that's, that's my aim yes so um I just call them adult stores Adult and I mean, also on social media, you know, it's a little bit easier to write the word adult than, you know, what things uh, can do when they're looking to filter things out. So my intention with these offers is that um, this experience is that you meet someone who can basically give you kind of a guided tour of what toys are and what they do, how you might use them and to help a person understand what they might like to choose. So I'm not going to go, you should get this. I'm going to teach a person to notice how they respond to what mm -hmm. it is they're looking at and whether that's a good feeling feeling or whether that's a not so good feeling feeling. And so okay. if you're talking about vibration, you might put vibration on your hand and you go, oh, God. <laughs> right, that might not be the one for you. So, but if you put it on your hand and you go, Oh, right, there's a good feeling feeling there that you're softening into. And so, it'll be about helping people notice what they gravitate towards, whether that's a look, whether that's a feel, whether that's a, the sort of experience like a kink experience. And, and let me frame that kink is just whatever feels a little bit naughty and edgy to you I think we can have a very clear stereotype of what kink is but if yeah. we just pair that back so in your relationship kink might be doggy style for example um, so we can um, just walk around the shop together is the intention and you know, just get a bit of education about the different toys and also work towards you understanding what you might like to try and what you might not like to try. And, you know, taking into consideration, you know, whatever it is that needs to be, you know, if you, if, for example, insertion really hurts, then we might look at not inserting or toys that might be more narrow to see if they were more appropriate. So, Yes, Perfect. I love yeah. that. I love it because online it's like there's so many choices and it's like, what do I get? Yes. <laughs> and if you haven't been into a store for a long time or ever, it's very hard to buy online and we can feel very nervous about choosing our first toy if for those mm. that haven't had a toy before. And there's there's also, you know, if you don't make a great choice first, then mm -hmm. it's 
it can be really off-putting and stop you from experiencing things. And toys can add a bit of spice. They can help you understand your body. They can help you increase your sensitivity. They can bring a bit more pleasure and play and uniqueness or a little bit of kink into your play with your partner. They have a whole variety of purposes. Toys that are, say, blindfolds, heightened sensuality by, you know, not having visual stimuli, everything else increases in sensuality. Mm -hmm. So there's things really have purposes. So I, I do, to answer your question about will I offer it, where will I offer it? I do intend to have days where I'm like, okay, I'll be here. You can have a session with me. So if I'm going to Sydney to open up, you know, three slots, for example, where okay. someone could book that in and and meet yeah. me for that Actually, there. Travelling all around Australia. I mean, who is doing this? I don't I don't know anybody. Yeah. Um, not that that means anything, but I just love <laughs> that <you're doing. laughs> I just love that you're doing it. And it's just I don't know. I just think it's a very empowering way for women especially, but also men because I feel that, oh, maybe I'm being one-sided, but I really do feel that a lot of men need more sex education um, in what they do. But, again, that's another topic. You are so gorgeous, so eloquent and elegant in your sharing with um, matters of sexual education and I can have a bit of fun with you because you get me and you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Got a bit of fun into it. So thank you, my gorgeous woman. And um yeah, I'm hope I'm not dragging you into these things, but I really want to do talk to you more about this because I think it's so powerful for everyone, even if you're free and well experienced we can always always learn and gather new information and tips so thank you emma you're welcome you're welcome julie thank you okay well that's a wrap for this one and again thank you gorgeous embrace being a sexy goddess bye for now Thank you for joining us on the enchanting journey through the realms of magic, mystique and self-discovery. I hope you enjoyed our time together on the Rich Witch Podcast, where we delve into the depths of witchcraft, astrology and the unapologetic rise of women. Please subscribe, rate and leave a review. And as we wrap up, I encourage you to carry the wisdom and magic we've shared into your own life. Embrace the power within you and revel in the beauty of your own unique journey. Stay tuned for more magic and in the meantime, stay curious and know your magic is a gift to the world. Blessed be, beautiful ones, and remember, the magic is always within you. This is Julie Nelson, signing off.